you know, guys, going into this season, I was a bit concerned that maybe this season might not be as good as season one. I couldn't help but think to myself that maybe they wouldn't adapt it as well as season one, or maybe they would miss out on some really important scenes that we're all looking forward to, or that, you know, there wouldn't be as much love put into this season as the first one. You know, just silly things like that that would pop into my head that made me feel a little concerned and fearful in a way. Those are the two words I want to highlight in this video, by the way. Concern and fear. And no matter how much I knew it was ridiculous, they always kept popping into my head whether I wanted it to or not. Now, let me tell you how quickly those fears and concerns flew out the window because it was immediate. I knew, I already knew I was being ridiculous thinking that. Like, every time I think that, I, I had to smack myself in the head like, what are you talking about? You know they're not going to fumble the bag here. And lo and behold, they have not. Because The Dangers in My Heart Season 2 is just as amazing as Season 1. It's probably going to far surpass season one actually and that puts a smile on my face good lord i have not stopped smiling since this season started because we have this series back i'll admit that man i probably look like a goofball right now but it's just been so incredible so let's talk about <clears throat> let's start with the twi yaba little o and a it's a it's an o and a actually it's an original net animation and i've seen a lot of people are a little confused about it so let's talk about it a bit because you see a lot of people have been saying that oh this is like the in between like the 12.5 episode to the dangers in my heart and they're not exactly wrong about that but it's not exactly right either i guess you would say because you see the Twayaba little episode is really, it's based on like little, like one to two page panels that the author posts on their Twitter for years, man. Since the series has been going, they've been doing this stuff. It's very cool, actually, and it shows a lot of engagement with the community. And they decided to animate this into, uh, anim obviously animation, duh. <laughs> and... When I tell you, those thoughts were prevalent in my mind. My fear and concern were prevalent going into that. But when I saw just how much love and care was put into that, I knew season two was going to be okay. I knew it was going to be okay. Because even the Twi Yaba special captures the essence of this series to a T. And it was fantastic. I'll even tell you guys now. A little secret, I guess you could say. Just between us. My favorite ones of those are when Ichikawa and Yamada are like texting with each other over the course of the night. We have multiple of those, by the way. We, we saw one, but there's so many of them. Those are my favorite one. Because they just capture like the innocence of this romance. And that's why it's so great. It's just, it's very heartwarming to see that every time because it makes me remember all the nights I would do that stuff. Dude, bro, I would get no sleep whatsoever. I still don't, but <laughs> it's just so great. And I truly loved it. I think they knocked it out the park with that. Unfortunately, I think it's only going to be one episode though, which is a damn shame. I don't think there's going to be another one yet. Now, I... Uh, it depends on the popularity of this season, which I think is going to be through the roof. I think it's already going to be one of the best shows of this season because it already is one of the best shows of this season. So I'm hoping we get more. There's plenty more they can animate. Trust me on that. But 
They absolutely killed it. Wanted to talk about that for a bit. Now let's get in to our actual season now. Now I know I beat this horse to death already talking about this. But guys, that opening, that freaking opening, man. I, I still cannot get over that opening. If you want to talk about just showing your love for a series, it is so obvious to me that the studio itself loves this series to death. For one, they promote the living, they promote the hell out of it, man. It's crazy. You go on their YouTube, it's plastered everywhere on it, which I love. They're, yeah, a lot of studios do that, obviously, but they're going the real extra mile. They're doing shorts. They're doing clips. They released the full first episode on there just yesterday. They are truly going above and beyond for this series, and I think the opening truly showcases that. My favorite scene by far in the opening is the dance scene. That shit is so good, dude. It's so perfect. <laughs> it's very, very adorable. And when I first saw that, that was that was the part in the... I mean, the opening was already amazing. But that was the part where I was like, oh, we got something special here again. They captured that same special feeling again. Insane. All right, but enough gushing. We're six and a half minutes in. We ain't even talked about the episodes yet. So let's start with episode one, obviously. And let's talk about it a bit, because I love how the episode immediately starts right where season one ended. Like, you know, at the end of season one, where they have this beautiful scene between each other. And like, oh, we got to get inside before class starts and all that. This is literally the same day. <laughs> it's literally the same day. That's what makes the Yamada and Ichikawa's little argument with each other. Not argument, the little spat, I guess you could say. That's what makes it even funnier to me. Because we just have that beautiful scene. And then we just have Ichikawa trying to deny everything immediately after to the teacher. Like, no, nah, she's she's not the person that I'm the closest with. No, no, she's just she's someone I talk to from time to time. She just gives him a look like, really? Really? Do we need to rewind like an hour earlier, Ichikawa, to you literally embracing me? And you're going to sit here and tell me that? <laughs> I like how immediately afterward, he's he's like, why the hell did I do that? Am I a freaking idiot? Why did I do that? Yes, a little bit. <laughs> but that's a part of growing up, man. <clears throat> it makes him feel especially bad, too, when he finds out that, yeah, she went behind my back and actually asked Adachi to help me just because he might be a little embarrassed if I'm the one helping him. He, bruh. You know how much of a piece of shit you'd feel like if you did that and then you find out, oh, they really tried to help me, like, behind my back, didn't tell me, did all this for me, like, dude, I would feel bad, like, oh, I, I messed up, I messed up bad. <laughs> but of course, he apologizes to her, he owns up to it, like, yeah, I'm just being dumb, sorry about that. It's a very nice scene, a really good way to start off our season, actually extremely adorable when he tells her, you know, maybe, maybe you don't talk to Adachi so much from now on. <laughs> that, that is like, bro, if that isn't just like school life in a nutshell, <laughs> that scene was great. That was great. But here's the thing. For every scene that ends very quirky and adorable, there are some scenes that end on not exactly a sour note, but with a pinch of concern and fear, like I mentioned earlier. So let's get into that. Let's get into the crux of our first episode here, which is Ichikawa's growing concerns with Yamada and her job. Because you see, guys, as we all know, and how Ichikawa definitely knows now, that Yamada loves her job being an actress, being a model, all this stuff. It's been her dream for her life. And she absolutely loves it. But we see on full display how this is kind of worrying to Ichikawa. 
And I'll even tell you guys now, he is very concerned about this. Not because he doesn't want her to be happy. He only wants her to be happy. His concern is that she's going to start pulling away from him. Remember, guys, he has, he's got unbelievable self-esteem issues, like, to the extreme. He does not think highly of himself at all. So, he sees Yamada as this bright, shining star, and his concern is that through these little jobs of hers, acting, modeling, and all that, she's gonna start pulling away from him, that they're gonna start separating themselves from each other that she's gonna pull away and leave him behind and we see this on full display his concerns and fears are starting to come to a head a little bit but for right now he's able to push it aside and try to truly wish for her happiness because that's what he wants but those concerns are growing and we will address them later on in our season far more i promise you that now you see guys with a lot of romance series you see a very common critique from people that you know the actual scenes of importance are done well they're executed quite well but the little in-between scenes are the scenes that a lot of people start nitpicking and they say oh well these aren't that great because with a lot of series it does feel like you're just moving from one important scene to another and everything else in the middle is fluff but with this show I think the little in-between scenes are freaking great. Case in point, the little scene with Haru in this episode, where she's asking Yamada, oh, what'd you do over the break and all that? She just starts naming things off, and she casually just lets slip, oh, yeah, I spent Christmas Eve with Ichikawa. Her reaction is so freaking great, dude. It's so innocent, and it's hilarious. She just starts looking at him like, oh... Yeah, you did, huh? What's going on here? And obviously, Haru is the one of the most observant people in this series. Like, she knows, man. Literally, right as our show begins, she notices the little, the little dog pendant that Ichikawa and Yamada has. She, she notices these things. <laughs> it's just the cat's starting to come out the bag a little bit guys they can't hide it too much longer because it's it's pretty obvious if you freaking pay attention what the hell's going on here <laughs> funny that i mentioned the keychain because this leads us into our next little scene in our first episode which is yamada losing akita kentaro and how this absolutely devastates her here and i really like the fact that you know, obviously Ichikawa goes and looks for it. He's got his big scene like, oh, I'll go do it. I'll find it. <laughs> and while he's out there, he even thinks to himself like, you know, this keychain's not really that important. You know, we could go get another one easily. Why am I digging through the snow with a broken arm right now? What am I doing? Until he starts to realize that, you know, it's, it's not about the keychain. The keychain is irrelevant. It's the feelings behind the keychain the intent of it that is important that and that was a beautiful scene where he's just there comforting Yamada in the snow man this show does those little precious moments extremely well now is it a little unrealistic that they'd find it hanging in the tree yes but I don't nitpick that kind of stuff because it was still a great scene okay and it leads us into our second episode, which is Ichikawa's first, I use the word first, specifically, trip into Yamada's house. Actually, real quick, before we get into the next episode, I will say, I, my opinion on, like, Moeko has really changed over the course of this series. I want to mention that, because she's the one that kind of gives Ichikawa these little pushes in these scenes, you know? She's the one that even tells him, like, you know, the keychain's not typically in this area. This isn't how she normally goes to school and all that. It wouldn't be around here. I just love the fact that over the course of the show, she she's completely figured out what's happening between them. And she kind of gives both of them these little pushes 
to get them together. I kind of really like that. My opinion of her has really increased over the course of the show. I like Moko a lot, actually. She's a great character. But all right, enough gushing about Moliko of all characters. Let's get into our second episode, 15 minutes into the video. Oh boy. <laughs> and talk about Ichikawa's first trip into the Yamada residence. Dude, when I tell you all that it is relatable when Ichikawa's desperately trying not to get like a boner here that shit is the most relatable thing ever it's so funny to me as a guy that happens that i'm sorry not to be too crude but that that shit happens man i still remember <clears throat> the first time i went over to a girl's house we were in her pool and all that and uh let's just say i'm real glad that water was cold <laughs> let's let's leave it at that that shit was so relatable. And it's super adorable that Yamada's constantly trying to get him in, like, her clothes and all that. We're, we'll see that later in our season, actually. It's in our opening, actually, if you pay attention. But <clears throat> I thought it, it's so funny that she puts out, like, her tracksuit and all that. Like, you know she did that deliberately. She just wanted to see him in it. That's so funny to me. And the funny fact that she ends up changing her clothes because she starts to feel self-conscious. That, that's just like a little scene that they try to do quickly. But that's why she put the hoodie on by like Because she started to feel self-conscious. Very, very fun. And it's here again that we need to talk about fear and concern. This time though, not from Ichikawa. From Yamada her perspective because you see in our first episode Ichikawa unintentionally lets it slip that he got his arm broken when he was trying to get that picture for Yamada when he was on his vacation and she feels terrible about that she feels responsible that he broke his arm or yeah he feels she feels responsible for that and he knows that. He knows that she's concerned about that. She's been distracted by it this whole time. And these feelings kind of come to a head. But not just feelings about that. Because it's here Ichikawa starts noticing throughout her house that, you know, you got a lot of stuff around here. Like the piano, for instance. And she starts telling him that, you know, yeah, I, I did piano for like a year. I did ballet. I did a bunch of other stuff. Kendo, all that. But I ended up quitting because I was never better than anyone else. She's expressed this emotion to him in our previous season as well, that she's never better than anyone else at whatever she tries to do, and she always quits because of that. And you see, that leads her to this line of thinking that, you know, I have so many great people in my life around me. And because of my constant quitting at everything I try to do, my quirkiness, my flippin' attitude, you know, that I'm going to be a burden to people and that I'm going to kind of drag them down. But those people aren't going to tell me this. They're not going to express these emotions to me. And eventually they're just going to walk away and leave me. And she even says this about Ichikawa. Because you see, Ichikawa literally tells her that, no, the people around you who care about you would tell you when you're being too much would be a burden. They would be honest with you. And I love the fact that she brings up our scene from the first season. Like, okay, well, remember those two days when you didn't come to the library and you ignored me? What was up with that? And she even tells him, that was you trying to be nice to me, right? That was you thinking I'm a burden, but being too nice to tell me, right? That's what she believes. She even says, you said you had stuff to do, but did you really though? She's afraid that Ichikawa is going to become that person that cannot express his true feelings to her, that secretly is going to get fed up with her and leave. And that terrifies her. That's why it's such a great scene when he subconsciously gets up and embraces her and just flat out admits to her, is honest with himself and her that no, 
I did that because I was afraid of getting hurt. I was afraid of being pushed away and hated. And that I was being a fool. And it's just, it's a nice, beautiful scene, man. Like, <clears throat> this series does such genuine moments with each other. I love how Ichikawa and Yamada are just flat out real with each other, you know? It takes some time. It is not easy to express yourself to someone else, to open your heart to them. But over the course of this show, we see them both actively doing that with each other. And that's beautiful. It's something so very simple when you think about it on paper, but it's such a hard thing to do in practice. Trust me on that. But then, of course, we gotta have our great quirky moments, too, in the episode, where Yamada realized, oh, shit, my mom's coming home. <laughs> and she tries to rationalize it, like, uh, I, I, I have friends over all the time. It should be fine, right? It's not a big deal. Ichikawa just tells her, uh, do you have boys over, though? Like, guys that are in your clothes, by the way? Just imagine a parent. Just imagine your parent coming home. And your son or daughter has someone over. And they're wearing your kid's clothes. Not good. Wouldn't be good look, I would imagine. <laughs> and then, of course, Yamada tries to hide him in her room. Trying to sneak him out when they get a chance. It's really adorable. But the most adorable scene in this scene is... When, you know, after her mom leaves, and it's just them two again, she notices the little milk tea container. And, well, we can't have Ichikawa looking at that. No, 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 no. So she desperately tries to get him to look away. She pushes him down to the on the bed, calling it revenge. And I'm sitting here like, shit, I didn't have that in middle school. Not in middle school. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> what a... What a stimulating situation. <laughs> but I really like that scene because some of you might not even realize why the milk tea is an important little scene. So I'll talk about that for a little bit. Just uh, in season one, remember, that was a, a really nice little subtle scene that I talk about. How this show does subtlety so much. With uh, That was just like an offhand little comment she says to Chi when they go on their trip to uh, all these different places. That was just a little offhand comment that she makes to her. She didn't direct it to Ichikawa or anyone. So when they get left behind and she's all emotional and he hands her that drink, she starts to understand that he... No, he really pays attention to me. He really listens to me. Even though she didn't directly tell him that, that scene showed her that, no, he he pays attention and listens to what I say. He actually, truly cares. He didn't even realize that, by the way, in that scene. He didn't, he subconsciously didn't even realize he got her her favorite drink like that. It's just the little moments like that. That's why she reacts like that in season one. And that, that's what makes this scene pretty funny to me, that she kept that the entire time. Just little things like that, man, that just make this show really great. And of course, as she sneaks him out of there at the end with the promise to come back, by the way, we see he runs into a very scary-looking individual. Who I'll just tell you guys right now, that's Yamada's dad. That's her right... That's him right there. <laughs> we'll see eventually that he, uh... He's got a striking resemblance to a certain person in looks and in personality. Let's just say Yamada and her mom might have the same taste in people. Let's let's leave it at that for now. <laughs> Very funny that he notices that he's still wearing like Yamada's jersey, by the way. Did he piece it together though? We'll have to see eventually. <laughs> Bro, I'd be shit in my pants if the girl's father came in and I put that on. I'd be like, I gotta get the hell out of here. Like Ichikawa literally did. He ran out of there. <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't know who that is yet, but still. Look at this big motherfucker. I'd leave. <laughs> but let's get to our final talking point in this pretty freaking long video, actually. I didn't mean for it to be this long. But I can't stop gushing, man. 
And that's the fact that we see towards the end of our episode, Ichikawa's voice starts changing. This man's going into puberty. And as a guy, let me tell you, that it that shit comes on quick. Before you even realize that you're like, oh man, I got facial hair now like my voice is a little deeper what's going on like my voice is like significantly deeper now what the heck is going on <laughs> it comes so quickly for guys as Yamada even literally tells him that <clears throat> but this also showcases their opinions on the topic of growing up because we see Yamada, Yamada wants to grow up as quickly as possible. Especially with the career she wants to go down. Like, she wants to become an adult so freaking badly, dude. We see that constantly over the course of our show. That she's embracing it. But Ichikawa is so deathly afraid of it. He's so fearful about growing up. Because it's like I said earlier in the episode. He's afraid... That when they grow up, him and Yamada are in two separate worlds and that they're going to drift apart. He even mentions that, like, our relationship cannot stay the same as we get older. He, he knows that himself. And we see these fears portrayed in his uh, inner mind every time we get our hunky badass shows up. How he portrays Ichikawa's, like, real feelings and how Ichikawa's constantly trying to deny them and I just like that dichotomy that he's just so deathly afraid of that and she's just so em embracing of that and will their opinions change over time we'll have to see eventually <laughs> later in the season but god man they've just absolutely killed this adaptation what can I say uh, I've talked for 27 minutes about it essentially this show is just good man there's so much to break down constantly you know what screw it man we're doing this weekly on the channel i've decided to do that <clears throat> just it's such a great show i can't not love to talk about it i'll be honest i'd like to i'd like to just wait and binge the whole show honestly i like doing that with shows more personally but for y'all oh, i'll suck it up and do it weekly you're twisting my arm here guys but Ah, uh, I'll do it for you. <laughs> but I'd love to hear your thoughts on these two episodes. And the Twayabo OBA too. Oh, O and A. Down in the comments, because they've just knocked it out the park. My fears and concerns are completely out the window. And I just couldn't be happier, man. Gushing for all this time. You can tell. So, I'd love to hear your opinions down in the comments. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day, week, month, and year. And until then, deuces, have a blessed day, and I will see you guys next time. Deuces.